Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a Michigan courtroom with Judge David Robertson as he takes on a sovereign citizen in several hearings. And, well, the results will speak themselves because this guy decided to go full pro se. And, Sovtards, you should never go full pro se. It doesn't look good. And thank you to the subscriber who sent me all these videos. So at any rate, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We are on the record calling 21-170-598. Midland Credit Management versus Kevin Hurst. Date and time for pretrial. No appearances. Good morning, Your Honor. May it please the court, Suzanne Strickarts, P44018, on behalf of the plaintiff. And your name, sir? Kevin Hurst. Okay, where are we on this trial, people? Uh, Your Honor, we uh, had a pretrial. You opened up a written discovery. We did send discovery out. Uh, we did receive it back, um, apparently unopened, indicating there was a written on the envelope itself. It had written, um, I'm reading here, I do not accept your offer to contract all rights reserved UCC 1-308 signed, um, and then it was a return to sender. Yeah, I don't think the UCC is going to help you out in this case, dude. Uh, yeah, now, thanks for trying, but uh, try again. Judge, All right, Mr. So we attempted to do discovery anyway. So. Mr. Hurst, did you refuse to accept the mail? Did I refuse to accept the mail? Yes. Sir, you can't do that. I can refuse to accept any mail that come to me. Okay, I just got one question. Where the hell did you place your brain at that made you think you could just reject discovery in your case uh, whenever you felt like it? Because this is a court. This is not something you want to reject because there will be consequences for your actions, and you don't want those consequences. This is what we're going to do. One of the things she sent you were requests for admissions. If you do not provide proper answers to those requests for admissions, they are deemed to be conclusively admitted. Do you understand that, sir? Jackson, Your Honor. Do you understand hey, what I have yeah. said? No, I don't. All right, here it is. You, I open written discovery in this matter. You have a right to whatever legal position you want, but you do not have your own set of court rules. Among the things that the court rules provide when written discovery is open is that she can send you requests for admissions. Those requests for admissions are in writing and they must be answered under oath and in a certain time frame. If they are not answered and filed in accord with the court rules, then they are deemed to be conclusively admitted. You will not be able to contest those things. And that was what was sent to you, sir. And those, that time to start running those started with the day they were mailed to you. Your so Honor, you don't want to I'm, not, it. I'm not even sure. I, I do not have any understanding of this is my debt or not. And this is why you need a damn lawyer, because the lawyer would have known what to do with that discovery packet. And now you are completely screwed, dude, because now you don't have that information to go into trial with. And now you won't be able to argue your case properly without that. Yeah, you're screwed. They just come in with these allegations. I'm trying to see and verify if it is. She, then when they called me the first time, they should have sent out verified um, 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 documents stating that, that the original creditor and who it was and that I truly owe this debt. Well, so, Your Honor, I just indicate that we did attach to those. Uh, they already, uh, they, they, excuse, excuse me, me, Mr. Hurst. Excuse me, I wasn't finished. Excuse me. Thank she was I, wasn't, I wasn't finished. I wasn't finished. She right, cut I'm going to meet off. you, Mr. Hurst. I'm not going to have this. Your Honor, she cut I'm me not going to have this. Talking. This is not a clown show. Oh, you my goodness. One at a time. I can't finish my statement. You won't speak one. Don't interrupt me again, Mr. Hurst. Go ahead, sir. Why, thank you. You will speak one at a time. You will not interrupt each other. You will not interrupt me. Do you understand what I have said? 
Mr. Hurt. I don't understand anything. Okay, fine. I don't even understand why I'm here. I'm going to mute I don't you. even understand what's going on. Well, if you would have pulled your head out of your ass and uh, sought some advice from somebody who actually knows what the hell is going on, maybe you wouldn't be so lost at this point because somebody would have been able to explain it to you at your level. And I'm sure that level would be kindergarten at this point. I'm muting Mr. Hurst, and I will let Ms. Strickhart say what it is she wishes to say. Then I will unmute Mr. Hurst and allow Mr. Hurst to speak. Ms. Strickhart, you were responding, Mr. Hurst. Yes, sir. Sure. I was just indicating that we did attach the account statements, the full chain of title and seller data sheet to the, the packet. So even though there was no requirement, we did, we did want to provide that to the defendant. Um, and so that was in all of those materials were in the packet that was rejected, Judge. Well, let's let Mr. Hurst respond. Okay, so um, the understanding that I have is that they should have contacted me five days be after they um, gave, they should have gave me documents five days after they contacted me about the alleged debt. I told them I didn't have no, I have no recollection of the debt. Yeah, I don't even know enough information to admit or deny the allegations to the debt. This is not the trial portion, dude. They're talking about discovery, which was all that stuff that came to you in the mail that you threw away. So by uh, not opening that packet up and seeing what was inside, you just lost out, dude. All that stuff you needed was at your fingertips, and now you're just going to complain and complain about it because of your own stupidity. So if they're accusing me of his debt, I would like to ask them a few questions so that I can so that they can verify that this debt even belongs to me. And that's why I refuse to pack it, because I don't know if they're trying to contract with me or not. I didn't know what it was. So I send it back. All right. Let me explain it to you again. Whatever political views you have. I had no mm -hmm. understanding that they were sending me these things. They didn't even tell me that they was going to send me. Did, in the last court date, did they say, or did she say, we're going to send you something? Sir, I opened written discovery. That allows you to serve written discovery. That allows her to serve written discovery. And she did so. If you elect not to receive it, then that's on you. That's the risk, and you bear the risk of that. But I would urge you, and let me tell you, as I told you at the beginning, you have an absolute constitutional right to represent yourself, but what you do not have is a right to your own set of court rules. You may not be frustrating the court rules, sir, by refusing to accept mail. If that's the choice you make, then that's the choice you make, and you will have to live with the consequences of that. I would urge you, sir, perhaps you might want to get counsel, because I don't think you understand the process, and I'm not at all sure you understand the consequences of the choices that you are making. However, as I indicated, you have an absolute constitutional right to represent yourself. I would urge you to get counsel. So I'm going to give you another date. And sir, she is going to do what she does to represent her client. And you're going to do what you do. And if the court rules will cut against you, then so be it. Yeah, dude, if you want to act like a dumbass, then that is your business. So be it. If you want to send that discovery back because you don't know the process, well, that's your own damn fault for not getting clued in on it. And as the judge says, so be it. I got a uh, question. Question. They are claiming that uh, this debt belonged to me, but they have to produce all the proof and verify that this debt belongs to me. The plaintiff has the burden of proof, Mr. Hurst. That's right. So she had to produce the proof that this debt belongs to me, right? She has the burden of proof. Okay. Thank you. Uh, All right. Judge, I'm sorry. Ms. Rickards? Uh, Your Honor, would it be possible for us to receive a motion date for, say, mid-July? Let's give him one more opportunity. Oh, you want me to resend the packet, Judge? I want you to resend the packet. And sir, let me urge you as strongly as I can. So receive and open the package. Because if you do not, the request for admissions will be deemed to be conclusively admitted. 
the lawsuit as a practical matter will be over. Do you understand what I have said to you? Yeah, I understand. Do you, uh, I got a question. Do you, should they have received, should they have sent me something before they sent me this package since the last court date? Sir, to verify to that? Sir, they're not required. If you're on, if you think they're, you, you need some information, you have the right to seek discovery too. But you can't tell them how to litigate their case. The same okay, way so she, she's going to send me a packet and I'm going to send her back a packet as well, right? No, you're going to do what you choose to do. She's going to send you, again, those requests for admissions. Well, you said the uh, discovery. Don't interrupt me again. Me. We had yeah. this conversation before, didn't we? Sorry. We Go had ahead. this conversation before. Go ahead. As a courtesy to you, she's going to send you the request for admissions one more time. You will either accept the package or you will not. You will answer and serve the request for admissions in accord with the Michigan court rules, or you will not. And then if you do not, then those things will be deemed to be conclusively admitted. If you choose to send written requests for discovery, you have a right to do that too. You can send written interrogatories, requests for production of documents, and requests for admissions. Same as her. Well, time passed. He ended up getting his packet. So let's see what happens then. Thousands of tears later. All right, we are on the record. This is 21-170-598. Midland Credit Management versus Kevin Hurst. Taking time for pretrial. Your appearance. Good morning, Your Honor. May it please the court. Suzanne Strickhartz, P44018, on behalf of the plaintiff. And what is your name, sir? Um, Kevin Hurst. Okay. All right. Uh, we're I, do hereby, right. I do hereby reserve all of my rights, waiving none, not to be compelled to perform under any contract or commercial agreement that I did not enterly, normally, normally, voluntarily, or intentionally. I do not accept the liability of any compelled benefit or unrevealed contract or commercial agreement without prejudice. Is there anything else you want to say, Mr. Hurst? That's it. All right. All right. Where are we on this file? Judge, uh, discovery has been completed. Uh, motion for summary has been filed. We are looking for the court to assign a date. Okay. Let's get you guys a date. Mr. Hurst, do you have the motion for summary disposition filed on behalf of the plaintiff? It looks like this. Was that? It looks asking, like this. Yeah, I'm asking okay, yeah. you to receive the motion. The summary disposition filed by the plaintiff. Do I have it? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So let's set you a date for hearing and we'll move on. Does uh, July 26, July 26 to 10 o'clock, does that work for everybody? Yep. Restrict yes, sir. Okay. July 26 to 10 o'clock, we will hear the plaintiff's motion for summary disposition. Sir, if you wish to file and serve an answer uh, to that motion for summary disposition, you must do so within the terms provided in the Michigan court rules. We'll hear the motion July 26, July 26 at 10 o'clock. Again, sir, if you want to file an answer, be sure to serve both the court and the uh, counsel for the other side. Well, what do you know? At least the soft heart got something right. I mean, he seems to be good to go at this point, but let's carry on and see what the judge has to say about this whole thing. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage. All right, uh, the court has had an opportunity to review the pleadings here. I, I was particularly uh, interested in the request for admissions that was served by the defendant. Request for admission number three, does the plaintiff admit and have proof that the allegations against the respondent are true and accurate with all documentation being verified, signature and sealed? These were admitted. Does number four, does the plaintiff admit and or have proof that the statute of limitations has not expired to collect on his alleged debt. Plaintiff admitted that. Does the plaintiff admit number six and have proof that the respondent had a meeting of the minds with Credit One Bank pursuant to the contract agreement in respect to full disclosure and that said contract contained or contains no elements of fraud by Credit One Bank. Plaintiff admits that. In number seven, does the plaintiff admit and have proof that Midland Credit Management purchased this contract from the original creditor and is now the new owner of the alleged contract 
and of the said debt that is old. Plaintiff admitted that. So what we have is we have an admissions by our defendant of the validity of the uh, contract, the admission by a defendant that Midland Creditor is a proper party plaintiff. And then we have in, in our request for admission number eight, does plaintiff admit and have proof that Credit One Bank did loan their credit to respondent and that the respondent is only obligated to pay back in money to Midland Credit Management? <laughs> plaintiff admitted that too. I uh, also note for the record that having reviewed um, the brief answer to plaintiff's motion for summary disposition, first of all, contrary to the court rule, is not supported by an affidavit. 2.116 G4 says that when a motion for summary disposition under C10 has been filed and served, the opposing party here would be the uh, defendant, may not rely upon his pleadings, but must by affidavit or is otherwise provided in this rule, demonstrate the existence of general issue of material fact. Again, I note for the record, no affidavit was uh, submitted here. I think it's fair to say that the pleading filed by the defendant is somewhat obtuse. I quote, for example, from the third page, the agreed upon proof of claim does not serve in place of the original account for it is a conditional acceptance and not the foundation of an action and does not become an original demand and amount to an express promise to pay the actual sum stated. In his first paragraph, the plaintiff, uh, and I'm quoting again, Plaintiff claims that the living soul utilizes an address in his answer, when in fact the address that is used there indicates that the living soul does not live at this address, but is receiving mail there. So the defendant has failed to appear. He has failed to support his brief answer to plaintiff's motion for summary disposition by affidavit as required by the court rule. The court has had an opportunity to review the pleadings filed on behalf of the um, plaintiff in this matter. And I'm satisfied. There's no general issue of material fact in this matter. Summary disposition is granted in favor of the plaintiff. If you'd be kind enough to send me your judgment under the seven day rule, I'd appreciate it. And there you have it. Proof positive that, well, if you don't know what the hell you're doing, then get yourself somebody who knows what the hell they're doing so you don't end up looking like this freaking jackass. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.